All right, we've got Casey here. We're going to go through the different elements that were found in the house. Take it away, Casey. Okay, well, um, let's see here. Um, inside the electrical panel, the main electrical panel, you have, well, basically you have two electrical panels. You have a main and a sub. Inside the main, we have a uh, breaker that is tripped when we got here, and it does not reset. It constantly trips, so there may be a short associated with that circuit. Okay, and where is that main it's, one at? It's, a, it's the main breaker that's on the, it's in the main electrical panel on the east side of the garage, and that's okay. one 15 amp breaker, which I have identified for you in the pictures. Okay, and the 15 amp is usually lighting, right? Yeah, lighting or socket outlets. And we do have this one. We have four outlets, we have four fixtures in the kitchen that are so those are not operating and there's no electricity going to them and dining room lights not coming on and the two lights over there are not coming on those two lights i have a feeling might be probably light bulbs and maybe the same with this one this one i actually took those off and put my electrical meter up to them and there's no electricity going to those so it could be that that's what that's going to right right okay right um also inside the main electrical panel there's a breaker that provides power to the sub electrical panel Okay. And it's a 125 amp breaker that they're using two uh, wires to pump that sub panel. And they got, so basically the breaker that's going from the main electrical panel to the sub panel is double tap. I've never seen it like that before. Um, inside, the, inside the sub electrical panel, there is a, uh, there's two lugs that receive both of those wires um, that like that's how it should be in the sub panel. But the way it's double tapped in the main does not look, to, look right. Um, so I do want that so what, to be looked at. Okay, so what would, what are you thinking? It says it's double tapped, which means the black electric that's going out is double tapped? Well, they're using two reds and two blacks. Okay. Well, so there's four wires connected to that main. Okay, so that may not be done correctly. Correct. Is there room enough to put a new... Usually what they do is, I mean, the one that, that the, the two that would feed that, um, it, it, it would have to take a different lug configuration. Okay. Where there's actual lugs that can receive two separate wires instead of cramming two into one lug. So would that just be a swap out of the breaker? It, it might be a new breaker bar bus connector to that to that main. Okay, panel. and you'll have pictures of that Absolutely. so we can send it to an electrician. Yeah, because I in all my career I've never seen it like that. Okay, so we can, we'll send it to an electrician and have him look okay. at it. Okay. Um, and then, uh, let's see here. Um, not much major. The water heater is a 2021 water heater. It's a 75 gallon, so it's technically should have three straps on it instead of two. Okay. Um, and then the water pipes coming off the water heater should be insulated with black foam insulation. Okay. So it's not, but you could just put the right. black foam on there. Okay. Minor stuff there. Um, exterior of the property, we have, um, we have an outlet that's on, on the north patio here. That's not GFCF protected. And oh, that's that one that's open. That's like, yeah. right. Right. right outside, right over there. The north patio, east wall. Okay, <laughs> north patio, um, east wall, got it. Yeah, uh, and then again, we just have like, there's four light fixtures on the south patio that aren't working. So again, it either, it's either bald or fixture. I just cover my butt to make sure it's either or. Okay. But just assume that it's not a ball. Okay. Um, in case it is a fixture that's bad. Um, there's two exterior showers on the west side of the house. Right. A north and a south as I labeled them. The one on the south side uh, does not, it, it looks like it's plumbed for hot water because the water lines come right up the water heater in the adjacent closet, but I didn't get any hot water flow from that faucet. So that's also the one that's leaking, right? It's the, it's the lower one, yeah. The lower one's leaking. So this is the shower without the tile, not it's the one adjacent water. to the shower. Spray. Okay. Or a hand, a hand. So no hot there? No. So the valve may just need to be realigned. Um, the pool equipment um, is located in the below grade pit in the rear yard. Okay. There is a heater that is vented in, out into the planter on the house. Which might we're gonna have Yeah, we'll go take a look at it. It's still. We've been here long enough. It's gotten dark outside. <laughs> yeah, we can see it. Okay, so while well, I don't know if you can see this or not, but I just said this might be a possible crack in the surface of the pool. Uh huh. Just because of its straight, rigid line. Right. Um, I can't get in it and actually feel if it's profiled or anything like that, but right. it's something for a pool piece person to look at. Okay. And then, so there is a heater in this below grade pit right here. So there's underground equipment here as well as equipment for the spa. They're separate right, from each separate, other. Two separate equipment. 
The vent pipe is ran underneath the ground and it pops up here. So we just need a cap. Ah, need, need a, a cap, cap on. for that vent pipe right there. Oh, good. Well, at least there's a vent. Earlier you yeah. were worried. <laughs> I was wondering where it's vented out, exactly. And then you tested the... Uh... Yeah, the fire pit works. The, the barbecue uh, quick release valve works right there on that south patio as well. Okay. Okay. The misters work. Um, we did do those. Um, the fireplace has, uh, we can go back inside if we want. Yeah, although it's so pretty here. Look at the beautiful backyard. Uh, okay, I'll turn this off. We'll pick it up back inside. All right, we're back inside, living room, fireplace. Okay, fireplace, um, I mean, I always know the obvious that it doesn't have an ember screen or any type of glass panel that's going to stop somebody from putting their hands in it. But more importantly, there's no gas key on the exterior of the firebox. The only shut off or control valve is located inside the firebox itself, and that's not to code. You shouldn't reach your hand in there to turn on and off the gas. Okay. So that's got to be adjusted to where there's a key on the exterior side of the firebox. Is this a regular fireplace? It's, it's wood burning and or gas. And or gas, okay. So it does have a spark arrestor on the chimney, so it can be burnt and used for wood. Okay. The damper, since it has a gas line going into the fireplace, does not have a clamp that really keeps it ajar or open. Right. So right now it's closed all the way. So in this situation, since the gas is over on that right-hand side, you and there's a closet over yeah, behind there, be you just plumb in the key for that. It's not a big deal. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, I, I, there's no carbon monoxide or smoke alarms outside the bedroom, so I'd recommend some combinations in three locations. One in this hallway on the west side, one in the north hall, and one in the east hall outside the laundry area. Okay. So that way all those rooms are protected with the door shut. Okay. And we can tell a seller about that. It's in the contract for seller to work on that. Um, let's see here. The dishwasher's not secure to the countertop or the cabinet, so it just kind of pulls in and out as you open and close the door. Minor stuff there. Um, in the north bathroom shower, the shower head leaks. It may need some Teflon tape where it screws onto the shower arm. This is the mid-century tile shower. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I call that the north bathroom. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, in the east bathroom, Okay. That outlet next to the sink is not GFCI protected. So that would be basically swapping that out for a GFCI outlet. Okay. It is grounded, yes. Um, one of the furnaces in the attic, you have two furnaces in the attic. Um, one of the furnaces does not have a catch pan underneath the coil for the condensate drain pipes, being that it's horizontally mounted in the attic, that's required. Um, there is some staining on the wood base below the pipes that you'll see in the photos. So. If those pipes get clogged, then that dumps a lot of condensate, which could penetrate through the ceiling. Okay, so there's two up there, and you access those over... The west side of the house through the louver vent door opens. Okay, so over by the spa, you go in there, and then you shimmy in, and there are two systems in there, and one does have a catch pan, yeah, and one's one does Yeah, one's a 2022 not... okay. system, and the other one's a 2012. The 2012 doesn't. Okay, so in 2022, when the new one went in... No, it was always, every time it goes in the attic, But But when they did the one in 2022, they definitely put in the right pan. So they got so a they, trap, they got catch pan, they got a, uh, a, a um, sensor to shut off the system if it, if it senses moisture in the catch pan. Okay. So it's got all the no, newest All the bells and, and whistles. Yeah. But in 2012, when they did it, they that did one didn't have all that stuff. It's, it was around, but they didn't do it. Yes. Okay. Um, you have a 2022 air conditioner also outside and a 2020 air conditioner outside. And those are located in the far the corner of the yard, mm -hmm. far away from the house so you don't hear them. So you don't hear the noise. Uh, let's see, that's pretty much the gist of it. Nothing really major. Um, the spa has um, one of the pumps that does the filter, the cleaning, the one that runs more often. Uh, it's got a noisy operation grinding from the motor, so it may be on its way out. It's wearing out, but it does work, but it's noisy. Um, the pool fill or the spot fill valve assembly is broken inside the deck box and is inoperative. And that's just going to, I mean, they said, the seller said to get that repaired, they're going to, it would cost about $2,000. And judging from what you see there, they could take off a segment of the outside cement that's on the yeah, raised that, portion. That, that coping deck and the exterior was a separate pour from the actual gunite spa mold membrane itself. They okay. poured that after the fact. So they just jackhammer that sucker out and, and make the repair. There's a mark along there in the decking, so it's not even it's not even monolithic pour with the concrete around it. So it's 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 its own entity. Okay. Um, this particular wall right behind you. 
What was your feeling on bearing, load bearing? I don't think it's load bearing only because we have an exterior wall just adjacent to it, you know, so I don't think that they would need a bearing four to five feet in. Um, you can, I mean, it's going to take somebody really small and you have to crawl over ducting in order to get to this area, but it looks like it may be accessible based on what, what, what I saw in the attic because there's a kind of separate roof pitch where it kind of cables in over here. But um, there's some ducting that I can see goes around here, and I, I trace this ducting going to these registers right here on the ceiling. So, um, you know, but it would be, you know, you, you may damage the ducting getting above that area to actually do anything. So that's why, you know, I didn't do anything. <laughs> okay. um, but it, it, it looks like it may be accessible that way, but I don't think it's. Uh, I personally don't think it's weight bearing. Okay, and then another thing we noticed earlier, I'm just going to point it out. There's a hairline crack here in the flooring. No big deal. Yeah. But that hairline crack goes under the wall and continues on the other side, which would indicate that this is one continuous slab. Oh yeah, this is the original foundation. Yeah, they just polished it and scored it over the years somebody did. Okay, and the chances of the electricity coming up from below is probably pretty small? It's pretty gonna... small because, um, you know, it kind of goes through the framing from the, from the panel. They weave it through the framing, either through the ceiling or through the wall. Okay. It doesn't really go underneath. It's not you can't make it watertight or moisture protected that way. Okay. So otherwise, generally? Yeah, overall, overall good. You know, the big money items, you know, they got a four, 400 amp electrical panel, you got a 125 amp sub, your roof is solid, your uh, newer AC systems, um, one of the two furnaces is newer, even the older one's only 10 years old. So, I mean, and those things don't get used in the desert. Okay. Um, and on the roofing, especially since there's solar up there, you said it's solid. It looks yeah, like everything's all, connected. I guess it may be no more than five years old in terms of being recoded. There's no blisters present. There's no evidence of any foam going. Everything's sealed and capped. Okay, that's really great. Yeah, and I took multiple pictures of all this stuff for you. Okay, and on that pool, I know you did sort of say, oh, that could be a crack. I said surface crack, so I didn't surface want crack. to say anything. You yeah, know, yeah. I just wanted it to be in red, so maybe a pool guy okay. can can verify that. If there was like a pool suite nearby, I would have tried to scrub it and see if maybe if it's just, you know, chlorine tablets or something that okay. made it white or something. But Probably I superficial. Anything. I mean, they would, yeah. I mean, they would have had water. I mean, the, water if there was a, the, the autofill valve is not running, so I mean, it's not leaking through it. It's, okay. it's all constantly filling up the water. Okay. Well, that's great. Okay, right. Casey, anything else you can think of? Not off the top of my head, no. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. All right.